This tutorial will show you how to download and install the TeamSpeak 3 client onto a Windows-based operating system. I will also discuss the setup wizard and the basics of how to connect to a server. If you're following along, be sure to pause this video as often as needed. This tutorial was recorded in high definition and is best viewed at 720p. To switch to high def, click on the 360p pull-up menu on the lower right area of the YouTube video control bar. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is open your web browser and go to www.teamspeak.com. Then, on the upper right area of the home page, you can either click on the large free download button for a quick single click download, or as we're going to do here, you can also click on the downloads link for more options. Now, if you're not sure whether you have a 32 or 64 bit operating system, just click on the Windows Start button, then right click on Computer, and left click on Properties. And as you can see here, we're using a 32 bit operating system. So now I'm going to close this window, and I'm going to choose the download button for Windows Client 32 bit. Next, we'll read through the EULA and click on I agree at the bottom. And I'm going to save this file to my desktop. And we can now close our web browser and launch the setup file that we just downloaded. So now I'm going to click Next, then I Agree, then Next, then Next, Next again, and Install. Now I'll click Close. And to avoid confusion, I'm going to delete the original TeamSpeak 3 setup file. And now I'm going to launch the TeamSpeak 3 client. Notice that when you start the client for the first time, the setup wizard will appear. So I'm going to click Next here. And as you can see, I'm being asked to enter a nickname. So I'll choose Theta for my nickname, which I can change at any time later on. Now, I want to point out that this should not be confused with a login username. This is simply the name that you want other people to see you as when you log into their TeamSpeak 3 server. In fact, TeamSpeak 3 has an advanced authentication system whereby a username and password is not required, and instead a unique identity is used to identify you as a user. Details on this subject will be discussed in a separate tutorial. So now I'll click Next. And this section determines whether you want to use voice activation or push to talk to turn on your microphone. When properly configured, voice activation allows you to speak with others in a hands-free fashion. TeamSpeak will detect when your voice is loud enough and enable the microphone as needed. With push to talk, you'll need to designate a hotkey on your keyboard which you will then need to press whenever you want to transmit your voice to others, sort of like a walkie-talkie or two-way radio. If you're in a noisy environment, or you want to control precisely when you are transmitting your voice to others, you may want to choose the push to talk option. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll choose voice activation and click next. This section configures the voice activation level, which requires that we perform a simple recording test. So you'll need to make sure your microphone is plugged in and ready to go. Incidentally, if you don't have a microphone, you can skip past this section and still use TeamSpeak to listen to other users, but you will not be able to transmit your voice. However, also note that if you're using a newer laptop or desktop, 
A microphone may already be built into your PC and is usually located somewhere along the top center area of your LCD screen. In some cases, the best way to determine if you have a built-in microphone is to proceed with the recording test we're about to do. If you discover that you don't have a built-in microphone, then you should be able to purchase an external microphone or headset from your local computer or electronic store for somewhere between 15 and 30 US dollars on average. When we're ready to begin our tests, we'll click on the test voice button and the idea here is that we're going to speak clearly into the microphone and for example we'll speak the words testing one two three several times to determine our signal strength. Then you're going to want to move this slider somewhere to the left of the maximum signal strength noted by the small light gray arrow which is going to appear along the bottom of this bar. So let's give this a try. Okay, so I'm going to click on test voice and as you can see the microphone is already picking up my voice and signal strength. So I'm just going to speak clearly once again. Uh, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. And you can see that the maximum signal strength is being denoted by this smaller light gray arrow at the bottom. So my recommendation is to put the slider bar somewhere to the left, perhaps 10 to 15 decibels to the left of that maximum slider bar, somewhere around here. Uh, notice that if I move the slider bar further and further to the left, the microphone becomes more and more sensitive in terms of turning itself on when it hears my voice. So. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have it too sensitive, otherwise all background noises, um, perhaps even your breathing, will be picked up by the microphone. Uh, as you can see here, the microphone is almost always on, designated by this blue button here. And so I'm going to slide it further right. And a general rule of thumb, if you're not speaking and you're just breathing normally, that microphone should not be turned on. So I'm just going to pause for a moment. And as you can see, the microphone doesn't turn on when I am not speaking. So once again, um, somewhere 10 to 15 decibels to the left of the maximum signal strength is what I would recommend. So I'm going to leave my setting right about here for now. When I'm done, I'll click on the test voice button again. And if nothing happened or you didn't hear anything during this test, then you probably don't have a built-in microphone or you'll need to make sure your external microphone or headset is connected properly to your computer and try again. So I'm going to click on Next here. And on this screen I can choose a microphone mute hotkey combination, which means that when I press that key combination my microphone will be muted. And similarly, I can choose a hotkey combination to mute my speakers. So I'm going to click on this first button here and choose the Right-Alt-M combination. And similarly, I'll click on the second button, choosing Alt-S for that combination. When I'm done here, I'll click on Next and then Finish. You are now ready to connect to a TeenSpeak 3 server. And usually at this point, you'll want to consult with your friends and obtain their server's connection information, or if you're renting a server from an authorized TeamSpeak host provider, you should receive your server information from the host provider, usually by email. Once you obtain your connection information, you'll want to click on Connections, and then Connect, and enter the server address, port number, and if designated, the server password in these three boxes. Note that the nickname we chose earlier has already been filled into the nickname box. When you're ready to connect, click on the Connect button. If you experience issues, you'll want to verify the server connection information, check for typos, and try again. Also, Please note that TeenSpeak 3 is not compatible with TeenSpeak 2 in any way. 
So, when connecting to someone else's server, make sure that they are hosting a TeamSpeak 3 server and not TeamSpeak 2. This concludes this video tutorial. Thanks for watching.